Hello everyone, today I'm going to be finishing Miss Krupp Cracks Me Up. Chapter 9, Slinking Around The horrible sound got louder and louder. It got deeper and deeper. I thought I was gonna die. Finally, I climbed out of my sleeping bag to see what was making all that noise. It was Mr. Docker and Mr. Mackey. They were snoring. I thought I was in the middle of a herd of hippos. Man, what is the problem with grown-ups? Kids don't snore like that. It must have something to do with the hair growing out of their noses. I hope I never grow up to be a grown-up. Psst, AJ, Michael whispered. Are you up? Yeah. I can't sleep with all this snoring, Michael said. Me neither. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. Hey, I said. You want to go get candy? Do you have any money? Michael asked. No, do you? No. Bummer in the summer. I really wanted candy. Let's go get a drink from the water fountain, Michael whispered. Okay. I stepped over a few kids in sleeping bags, and then my foot bumped into something hard. Ow! Somebody yelled. You kicked me in the head, Arlo. Ugh. It was Andrea. Sorry, I said. Whenever you have to say you're sorry to someone, but you don't really feel sorry, just say sorry. And because that is the opposite of sorry. When you say sorry, it means you're not sorry at all, but nobody can punish you because at least you did say you were sorry. It's a win-win. That's the first rule of being a kid. Do you have any money? Michael asked Andrea. Of course, she replied. My mother gave me a $10 bill to buy something educational at the gift shop. Everything Andrea does is educational. When she blows her nose, she probably writes an essay about boogers for extra credit. Can we borrow some of your money? I asked. We want to get candy. Only if I can get some too, she replied. I didn't want Andrea coming with us to the candy machine, but I did want candy. Okay, I said. I have money too, a voice whispered. I want to come. Oh man, it was that crybaby Emily. The th this thing was turning into a party. The four of us grabbed our flashlights and tiptoed around the other sleeping bags. Hey, you know what would be cool? I said. We should pick up one of those snoring grown-ups and put them in the diorama. Can you imagine Mr. Docker or Mr. Mackey waking up next to a wild yak? That would be hilarious. Michael agreed, but I don't think we could pick them up. We could if they went to Weight Watchers, I told him. Can we go already? said Andrea. The four of us slinked around in the dark like secret agents. How come they don't have a security guard? Emily whispered. Anybody could come in here and murder us. The doors are locked, dumbhead, I told her. They have chains on them. If there are chains on the door, Michael whispered, that means we can't get out either. We all looked at each other. I thought I heard scary music playing again. Relax, I finally said. Who's going to murder us? The dead animals? We slinked over to the candy machine. Awesome. It had all my favorite candy bars. This was the best night of my life. Andrea pulled, pulled her $10 bill. Sorry. Andrea put her $10 bill in the slot, but it popped back out. She tried it again, and it popped out again. The machine doesn't take $10 bills, Andrea said. This was the worst night of my life. Hey, look, Michael said, pointing to some boxes that were stacked next to the candy machine. They're boxes of candy, said Emily. Great, the candy is free. You mean it can fly wherever it wants, I asked. No dumb head, Andrea told me. It means they're giving the candy away. All right. I was so happy, I didn't even bother saying anything mean to Andrea. We all grabbed the candy and started stuffing it in our mouths. I ate about a million hundred candy bars. It was the greatest night of my life. Chapter 10. Penguins are cool. It was dark and quiet. The little hand on the clock was past 12, so I knew it was after midnight. But I ate so much sugar, there was no way I was going to get to sleep. Let's slink around by the animals, I suggested. Yeah, agreed Michael. 
You're going to get in trouble, Andrea said. I'm going to tell Mrs. Daisy, said Emily. Fine, I said. Tell her, and I'll tell her you ate all that candy. Me and Michael slinked around the first floor like secret agents. Andrea and Emily, the big copycats, followed us. We looked at the moose again, and the buffalo, and the gorillas. The animals looked even more real th late at night. That's when I saw it, the most amazing thing in the history of the world. But I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. And you don't even have to read the next chapter. It was a diorama filled with penguins. Penguins! I must have missed this before. I'm sure I would have remembered it. I pressed my nose against the glass. Ever since I was little, I loved penguins. I slept with a stuffed penguin in my crib when I was a baby. I dressed up like a penguin for Halloween. I used to have an imaginary penguin friend. I saw every penguin movie there was to see. Looking at those penguins close up, I was hypnotized. I could almost hear them speaking to me. Come with us, AJ, one of the penguins said. We'll go to Antarctica. You can play with us forever and ever and ever. Kids don't have to go to school in Antarctica, said the second penguin. There are no teachers to tell you what to do. There are no parents to yell at you. There are no problems. It's paradise. In Antarctica, we don't care if you secretly love Andrea, said the third penguin. Come with us and live in peace, said the fourth penguin. We'll slide around on the ice all day. It'll be fun. I'm coming, I told the penguins. I'm coming with you. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Michael's. AJ, are you okay? He asked. Who are you talking to, man? Uh, nobody. It must have been the sugar. Chapter 11. How to Stuff Stuff We slinked around some more, and then I came up with the greatest idea in the history of the world. Hey, I said. Let's see what's in the secret room. AJ, you're a genius, Michael said. Andrew and Emily said we would get in trouble, but me and Michael slinked over to the secret room, and the copycat sisters followed us. Michael put his hand on the doorknob. Don't open that door, I warned. Why not? Because when you open a door to a scary place at night, a horrible creature is waiting to jump out and kill you, I told him. I saw that in a movie once. That's silly, Andrea said. She grabbed the knob and pulled open the door. You'll never believe in a million hundred years what was in the secret room. It was Miss Krupp. She was holding that wild yak fur. What are you kids doing here? She asked. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I had to think fast. We're uh, sleepwalking, I said. All of you? It's dangerous to sleepwalk alone, I explained. Are we in trouble? Asked Andrea who I'm sure has never been in trouble in her whole life. Of course not, said Miss Krupp. You kids must love natural history, just like I do. When I was your age, I snuck into a zoo one night. People who sneak into zoos at night are weird. You must be nocturnal, Michael said. We looked around the secret room. There were heads and other parts of dead animals everywhere. It was creepy. What is this place? Emily asked. This is where we prepare the animals, Miss Krupp told us. You see, I'm a part-time taxidermist. Do you know what a taxidermist does? You drive people to the airport, I guessed. That's a taxi driver, dumbhead, Andrea said. Taxidermists mount animals for display. Oh yeah? I told Andrea. Well, maybe she mounts animals for display, and then she drives them to the airport. Ha ha ha, in her face. That's why I'm in the Gifted and Talented program. Nana Nana Boo Boo on Andrea. So, you stuff stuff? Michael asked Miss Krupp. The animals aren't stuffed, she told us. The skin is mounted on its original skeleton, which is covered with wire and plaster. I try to make dead animals come to life. People who make dead animals come to life are weird. Taxidermy is cool, said Andrea, the big brown noser. Hey, Miss Krupp. Krupp said. Would you kids like to see a special exhibit I'm working on? It isn't even open to the public yet. Sure, we all said. Follow me. Miss Krupp led us down the hall to an unmarked door. She put a key in the lock. Then she turned the doorknob. Don't open that door, I shouted. Will you calm down, AJ? said Emily. Miss Krupp opened the door. 
there was a big sign on the wall. This is what it said. The amazing world of poop. Chapter 12. The amazing world of poop. I looked around the room. It was a whole exhibit devoted to poop. Nothing but poop. I never thought I'd see poop in a museum, Emily said. Oh, poop is a fascinating part of natural history, Miss Krupp told us. We all laughed because whenever a grown-up says poop, you can't help but laugh. Miss Krupp cracks me up. Poop can reveal what an animal eats, how it digests food, and whether or not it's sick, Miss Krupp said. Some animals use poop to tell enemies to stay away. Others use it like a perfume to attract mates. Ew, we all said. Gross. Miss Krupp walked around and showed us the display she made. I had never seen anyone who was so excited about poop. Did you know that the most expensive coffee in the world comes from Palm Civet poop in Indonesia? Miss Krupp asked us. It costs $175 a pound. I'm glad my parents drink tea, said Michael. Really, Miss Krupp said. In China, they make some tea from caterpillar poop. That's the last time I go to a Chinese restaurant, I exclaimed. Miss Krupp showed us a picture of a sloth. It only poops once a week, she said. That happened to my dad once, said Emily. He had to go to the doctor. A week isn't so long, Miss Krupp told us. The amazing world of poop. Grizzly bears may go six months without pooping. No wonder they're so mad, I said. African elephants can produce 300 pounds of poop every day, Miss Krupp said. Wow, said Andrea. What do they do with all that poop? Well, in some parts of Africa and Asia, elephant poop is made into paper. I hope they don't make it into toilet paper, I said, because that would just be weird. Do you know what else is weird, Miss Krupp said? Rabbits eat their own poop. Ew, we all shouted. Disgusting. And termites glue their houses together with poop. Hey, Andrea, I said, didn't your dad do that to your house? Oh, snap, said Michael. That's mean, Arlo. Dung beetles push balls of poop around and bury it, Miss Krupp told us. Sounds like one of Arlo's playdates, Andrea said. Oh, snap, said Michael. Storks squirt poop on their legs in hot weather to cool off, Miss Krupp said. So does Andrea, I said. We pushed buttons to watch cool videos of animals pooping. Did you know that rhinoceros stomp on its poop and kick it around? It's hilarious. And some boy cranes fling buffalo poop up in the air to impress girl cranes. Don't even think about it, Arlo, said Andrea. People throw poop around too, Miss Krupp told us. In Wisconsin, they have a cow chip tossing contest. Oh. One man threw a cow chip more than a half the length of a football field. Remind me not to play football on that field, said Michael. People in Wisconsin are weird, I said. I had no idea that poop could be so interesting. We got to match poop samples with the animals that pooped them. Then we got to touch an 80 million year old piece of dinosaur poop. Miss Krupp showed us some poop under a microscope, too, and we got to push buttons on a map to learn the word for poop in different countries. Poop is a palindrome, Miss Krupp said. Does anyone know what a palindrome is? Andrea was waving her dumb hand in the air like she had to go to the bathroom really badly, which would have made perfect sense in The Amazing World of Poop, but Miss Krupp called on me instead, so na 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 boo boo on Andrea. A palindrome is when you make friends with bees, I said. My pal is a drone. Not exactly, Miss Krupp said. Andrea? A palindrome is a word that is spelled the same way forwards and backwards, she said. That's right. Why can't 300 pounds of elephant poop fall on Andrea's head forwards and backwards? You sure know a lot about poop, Miss Krupp, said Emily. Poop is my life, Miss Krupp replied. People who like poop that much are weird, but the amazing world of poop was really cool. We learned more than anybody would ever want to know about poop. And Miss Krupp said the word poop so many times, it didn't even sound funny anymore. It was really late. Miss Krupp took us 
back to the Giganotosaurus, and we climbed into our sleeping bags. Finally, I fell asleep. I dreamed about a giant poop that was riding a bicycle, and it was making some weird sound. A buzzing sound. No, it was a swishing sound. No, no, I got it. It was a hissing sound. Hmm. Okay, the last chapter. Chapter 13. Stuff like this happens every day. What was that weird hissing sound? Hey, I whispered to Ryan, who was in the sleeping bag next to mine. Stop that hissing. I'm not hissing, he replied. You are too. He went back and We went back and forth like that for a while, until suddenly there was an ear-piercing shriek. Eek! There's something in my sleeping bag! screamed Emily. Instantly, everyone was awake and jumping out of their sleeping bags. Emily started running around, freaking out. What is it? Andrea asked. Maybe it's a blue-tongued skink, I yelled. It's a bug! Emily shrieked. It must be that rare hissing cockroach from Madagascar, screamed Andrea. It's General Muffin, Michael yelled. Run for your lives, shouted Neil the nude. Ryan's mom and Mr. Mackey and the rest of the grown-ups tried to calm everybody down, but it was no use. Nobody wanted the cockroach to touch them. We were all screaming and jumping around. Finally, Miss Krupp came over. What's the matter? she yelled. That disgusting cockroach was in Emily's sleeping bag, Andrea shouted. Now we can't find it. I thought you said you captured it. I just said General Muffin was in a safe place, Miss Krupp explained. I didn't want you kids to be scared. Well, we're scared now, Andrea shouted. Poor General Muffin, said Miss Krupp. Who cares about General Muffin, Andrea yelled. It's a cockroach. Man, that was a first. Andrea actually yelled at a grown-up. There it is, Michael suddenly shouted. There's the cockroach. Where? There. Emily, Andrea shouted. It's crawling on your back. Eek! Let's kill it, all the boys yelled, and we started chasing after Emily. Don't kill General Muffin, shouted Miss Krupp. He's very rare. Kill it, kill it, kill it, we all chanted. Emily was running around like her pants were on fire, and me and the other boys were chasing her. That's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. Do you remember the giant bear that was next to the Giganotosaurus? Well, while we were chasing Emily around, Neil the nude kid uh, ran into it. Watch out, Ryan's mom yelled. The giant bear started to topple over. And do you know where it landed? Right on Emily. It was hilarious. A real Kodak moment. You should have been there. Eek! Emily screamed, freaking out on the floor. There's a dead bear on me! Get it off! Get it off! Sheesh, what a crybaby. So there was a giant hissing cockroach in her sleeping bag, and the dead bear fell on top of her. Big deal. Stuff like that happens all the time. Finally, Mr. Mackey and Mr. Docker were able to pull the bear off Emily. Miss Krupp caught General Muffin with a net and put him in a cage. After all the excitement was over, the grown-ups brought us into a room for breakfast. They gave us cow chips and scrambled dinosaur eggs, but I don't think they were real. I hate natural history, Emily said. Natural history is cool, said Michael. We were still eating when Miss Krupp came running into the room. Hey, who ate all the candy that was next to the candy machine, she asked. I looked at Michael. Michael looked at Andrea. Andrea looked at Emily. Emily looked at me. It must have been General Muffin, I lied. Yes, Michael said. You told us he likes candy. We probably shouldn't have lied about General Muffin eating the candy, but Miss Krupp shouldn't have lied to us about capturing General Muffin. Lying isn't a very nice thing to do, but I guess sometimes even grown-ups do it. The museum will open in five minutes, somebody announced. It was time for us to leave. We rolled up our sleeping bag. Ryan's mom said we could look in the gift shop for a few minutes until Mrs. Cormel arrived with the bus. Andrea felt bad about what happened to Emily, so she bought her a glow-in-the-dark dinosaur bone toothbrush. Neil the nude kid bought a box of fake moose poop that was really just chocolate. As we were leaving the museum, Miss Krupp gave each of us a diploma that said we were junior nature lovers. There was a picture of a dinosaur on it, 
I'm going to put mine up in my bedroom. All in all, the Natural History Museum was almost not boring. Can we come back next week? I asked Miss Krupp as we lined up at the door. Uh, well, said Miss Krupp, now that you are official junior nature lovers, uh, don't, don't have to ever come back again. Bingle boo, said Mrs. Cormel as we piled onto the bus to go home. What did you learn about? Poop, I told her. Well, that's pretty much what happened on the field trip. Maybe Miss Krupp will never find out that we ate all the candy. Maybe General Muffin will stay in his cage from now on. Maybe someday Emily will forget that a giant hissing cockroach crawled into her sleeping bag and that a dead bear fell on her. Maybe Mr. Docker and Mr. Mackey will cut their nose hair so they'll stop snoring. Maybe Miss Krupp will stop dressing up like a wild yak and get interested in something besides poop. And maybe we'll be able to talk Mrs. Daisy into taking us on another field trip. But it won't be easy. Okay, and that's the rest of the story. Miss Krupp cracks me up. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.